So yesterday I made a video on the John Isner forehand technique and said this about the use of his non-hitting hand on the forehand. And that prior to contact, his non-hitting hand was rising. So look how his left hand is going up as he gets to the ball. Most recreational players I see who struggle rotating their hips into the ball, it's because their non-hitting hand drops. You do not want to drop at this point. You want your non-hitting hand rising to contact. Now in the comments below that video, people were questioning whether Rublev and Sissipas and, and Sinner do the same thing with their non-hitting hand, if their non-hitting hand rises as they're striking the ball. Well, let's find out. Hello, it's Ryan from 2MinuteTennis.net, and in this video, I'm going to show you the Sinner, Sissipas, and Rublev forehand and show you what you can learn from their non-hitting hand to improve your forehand. So here we've got on the left, we've got Yannick Sinner, and this is a video courtesy of Haptic Kinetics. Awesome uh, account. Please make sure you subscribe to their channel. I've put their link in the description below. And here we've got Sissy Paz on the right, a video courtesy of Tennis Builder on Instagram, another great account. So just be sure to, to subscribe to these awesome channels. So specifically, we're talking about the left hand movement or the, the non-hitting hand movement as these players are striking the ball. So in the Isner video, I was talking about how the non-hitting hand should rise up leading up to contact and even during contact. So what I want to do is I want to take the lowest point of Yannick's left hand. So right there, Yannick's left hand is at that point right there. Now check this out. I'm going to take it to the point where he contacts the ball. So there's contact. So here's his left hand. And now what we're going to do is go after contact. We can see it's going even higher. So his left hand, as he is striking the ball, is rising. So his left hand is going like this. Watch his left hand rise. And, and, and there's no doubt about it. We don't even have to, to question, you know, is his hand rising? So his hand's going from one yellow line to another yellow line. Now, something that I hear often is, well, Ryan, his non-hitting hand isn't rising. It's just that because his body is rotating, the natural movement is that the non-hitting hand rises. True, but it's still going up, right? So it, it doesn't have to be an active movement of the left arm or the non-hitting arm. What it needs to be is that that hand is going up. And what you notice is at this point, most recreational players drop their arm down. And the reason I can say that with full confidence is from over, t over 24 years of coaching, player after player. I've, I've taught about 60,000 hours on court. And unequivocally, most recreational players drop their non-hitting hand down as they hit the ball. And in a second here, I'll be back in front of the camera showing you what I mean. And, and the pros don't. The pros to, to some extent, some extent, some more, some less, the hand goes up. So you, we can see it very clearly that his left hand goes up. So now let's take the Sissy Paz video. So this right here is the lowest point of his left hand. So we're just going to draw that point right there. And now he's going to strike the ball and let's check it out. So there's after contact and now his left hand is here. So his left hand is going up. Now, partly you'll see sometimes the players tuck the arm in as a reactive break that actually helps slow the body down in order to accelerate the racket, something very similar to the serve. But the idea that the non-hitting hand rises for pro players when they hit great forehands is so important because what it does is it makes sure that your hips can turn. When the non-hitting arm drops, and I don't care who you are, if the non-hitting arm drops when you hit the ball, you will not be able to turn your hips as effectively. Now, <laughs> let's look at the Rublev forehand because this is the one that's a little controversial. And this video is courtesy of 12KGP Tennis on YouTube. I use their account all the time for videos. A great account. Again, make sure you subscribe to all three of these accounts that I'm using. Um, they're so generous to allow me to use their footage. So please subscribe to their awesome channels. So let's look at Rublev here. Bah! You know, it's, it's, it's awesome how hard he crushes this ball. Now, obviously, he's got amazing body rotation as he's hitting this ball. It's very obvious. Here his chest is facing off to the left. Hips are facing that way. And now look, he's completely rotated his body. 
Let's look specifically at his non-hitting hand. So here, let's get to the hand to its lowest point. So here, his non-hitting hand, there are his fingertips. So that's how low his hand is prior to contact. And now he's hitting the ball and look at his non-hitting hand. Or I shouldn't say he's hitting the ball, but he's swinging to the ball. Look at his non-hitting hand, rising, rising. And he's someone who does tuck it in against the body. And now the non-hitting hand is up here. So he's gone from the bottom yellow line to the top yellow line. Very clear. The non-hitting hand is rising. You know, you get people who will say, yeah, but Ryan, they're not actively, as I mentioned, they're not actively raising their left hand. They're rotating the body, which gets their left hand to go up. Exactly. As a coach, my job, coaching isn't necessarily just science. There's a bit of art to it. You have to help people accomplish what you want them to accomplish. So in that video of Isner, I mentioned to people, when you hit the ball, feel like you're waving to your opponent. Well, no one's going to wave with their hand down here. They're going to bring the hand up, which is what? Getting them to raise their hand, which is all about getting the body to rotate as you hit the ball. So it's very obvious with Sinner, with Sissipas, here with Rublev, that the non-hitting hand is rising as they're hitting the ball. You look at Del Potro, you look at Feder, you look at Azarenka, you look at Serena. They all raise their non-hitting hand as their racket is going toward the ball and even after contact. Because it is a way to make sure that the hips rotate. Again, if Rublev right here dropped his non-hitting hand, which I'm going to show you in a second, he would not be able to turn his hips, nor would we even know who he is if he dropped his arm down, because he would hit forehands the way, you know, players who search on YouTube <laughs> hit forehands, you know, and he wouldn't hit the, this big, huge forehand that, that he has. So it's really important on your forehand that you are working on raising your non-hitting hand, just like Sinner, just like Stefanos, and just like Rublev. All right, let me show you what this looks like in front of the camera. Now, before we continue, be sure you hit the like button and check to see that you've subscribed to the channel and hit the notification bell. That way you know when I put up new videos. I'm trying to put up about two every day. All right, the non-hitting hand rising as they're striking the ball. Let's first talk about why you want to do this. Let's think about the opposite of that. The opposite of the non-hitting hand rising is the non-hitting hand dropping. Why is that a problem? Because we want to turn our hips when we're striking a forehand, whether it's a golfer or whatever, it's the same thing. We want, to, we want the hips to rotate. Open stance, closed stance, it doesn't matter. When the non-hitting hand is dropping as you're hitting the ball, it becomes a counterweight and you end up hugging yourself and you won't be able to turn your hips. This is why you see pro tennis players raising their non-hitting arm because they're making sure that their non-hitting hand isn't dropping, which would not allow the hips to turn, see? We need that non-hitting hand going up. Now, some, some keep it more out in front of them. Some tuck it up more against their body. When the players tuck it more against their body, it becomes a reactive break. Their body slows down, and then the hitting arm accelerates. That's the way to slow one part of the body down in order to accelerate another body, uh, body part. We want the non-hitting hand, though, rising as we're striking the ball. Now, in that John Isner video, I mentioned the idea of feeling like at contact that you're waving to the opponent. Why did I use those words? Partly because my job as a coach isn't always to be right, but my goal is to be helpful. There's a difference between being right and being helpful. My job isn't to inform you, or my, what I perceive to be my job, isn't to just inform you about what the pros do. My job is to say it in a way and to show you some things that the pros do that are going to help you play better tennis. The reason I say wave to the opponent when you're striking a ball with your non-hitting hand is because that, those are the words that my students over 24 years have said to me when they typically drop their non-hitting arm and then you get them to keep it up and you actually get them to understand this drill where their hands are on the other side of the racket and they're making this move and they're learning to raise their non-hitting hand. They'll say things like, Ryan, I feel like I'm blocking my opponent's view of me or my face or I feel like I'm waving to my opponent. Those aren't words that I just make up. Those are the words from my students who finally learn to rotate their body with their non-hitting hand rising, just like the pros. They say they feel like they're waving to the opponent. So go out and film yourself hitting forehands. And as you, you know, get the butt cap pointing at the ball, 
as you're going toward contact, see if your non-heating hand is dropping, which we did not see from Sinner, Sissipas, or Rublev, or see if the non-heating hand is rising, which we saw from all three of them. See if your non-hitting hand is rising. And if it's because you're actively having to raise it at first, great, at least it's going up. Or if it truly is just that you're rotating your body and the non-hitting hand is rising, it, that's awesome too. We want the non-hitting hand going up and rising up as you're striking the ball to make sure that you're turning your hips. If you haven't gotten a Topspin Pro already, you need to. Uh, I love being an affiliate for this company because their product is absolutely incredible for at home. It's, it's raining outside right now, so I can't go on court and film, but I can do it here in my basement because I got something to hit and for a, as a way for you to practice. If you're a coach or a club owner, you gotta get a bunch of these for your, for your members and for your, for your academies. It's just an awesome product to be able to practice. My affiliate link is in the description below. It would mean the world to me if you used my affiliate link. So go out and film yourself. Film yourself hitting forehands. If you have video footage of your forehand right now, check it right now. And look to see as you're hitting the ball if your non-hitting hand is rising or if it's falling. It's gonna be one of the two. It's gonna be one of the two. It's either gonna be dropping or it's gonna be rising. If it's rising, you're on the right track. If it's dropping, work on raising your non-hitting hand during contact, and there's no doubt. You're gonna gain confidence, win more matches, and play much better tennis. This is Ryan Reedy from twominutetennis.net. You got this.